Hey there, today I'm going to show you some footage that I had done previously for a Patreon exclusive tutorial. This was a rather in-depth tutorial I'd say compared to the other tutorials I had at the time at my channel and since my Patreon is currently closed because I just can't keep up with so many things at a time, I decided to use this footage and just record a new voiceover. I want the tutorial to stay Patreon exclusive but still since you can't get it right now I thought why not use this footage I'm still very proud of this painting I think that it turned out really cute and so I'd use it because I'm currently moving and I injured kind of injured my hand I have tendovaginitis I have no idea how to say that word which is pretty common I guess and it comes from using the computer mouse too often and I'm also not supposed to paint right now so I thought I'd use this footage because it's already pre-edited and this is where I'm coming from I feel like I took forever to explain that but here you can see me painting a wolf and today I wanted to chat a little bit about confidence in your art because I feel like a lot of people they are starting out with art or are already pretty good with it or have been doing it for a while and confidence is a big issue for them and honestly, some of those people, they're really skilled at art and have a lack in confidence. But most of the time, the lack in confidence is what's actually holding them back in developing their skills and getting better. So you're stuck in this spiral of your art isn't quote unquote good enough, but you also feel like you're not confident. So that makes you show up even less and then your art can't improve proof. So honestly, I think that you can't expect to become confident once your art looks good. You have to do it the other way around. You have to become confident first in order to improve your art and in order to show up more and share your art more. Because at the end of the day, we want people to see our art. Most of us want to build a business and make this into a profitable income. So at the end of the day, we want eyes on the art. We want people to see it. And if we don't feel confident with it, we're going to be standing in our own way. We're going to be holding ourselves back here. And honestly, you have to work on your confidence first. You don't have to have complete confidence in your art before you get started, though. In essence, what it is about is to accept that self-doubt is going to be here. And by the way, I've already recorded and uploaded a podcast episode about self-doubt, which is on YouTube here as well. So it's especially self-doubt as an artist. If you're interested in that, I highly recommend checking that out. But in essence, it's just about accepting that self-doubt and fear is gonna be there you're not always going to love your art you're not always going to be confident with it and once you accept that those feelings and those thoughts are going to be there you remove all the additional drama about it you're not waiting anymore to feel confident I mean I said that you have to feel confident first but honestly confidence comes from just taking action no matter what. I think that we get it wrong somehow a little bit. We think that being confident means that you're always completely on board with all your ideas and emotions and the things that you create and that you always love them. People always think that I always love my art because I'm an artist, I'm a professional artist, I'm showing up here, I have a YouTube channel. People think that I'm completely confident but I'm not honestly and I've just accepted that I don't 
don't have to be, which is, I mean, that sounds contradictory, but the fact that I accept that I'm not always confident, that makes me confident because I know that I don't have to be, I don't have to feel a certain way, I don't have to think a certain way in order to keep going with my art. I just accept whatever emotion is there and create anyways. And that's what it is about at the end of the day. And when you show up consistently over time again and again, your art will improve and then you will feel more confident because you are creating better art. And I've always said that the more art you create, the better you get. But quite honestly, you have to think about improving your art at one point as well. So I'd recommend if you are really stuck here to follow some tutorials from other people. I have a lot of tutorials on this channel and you can also follow Skillshare classes. I have Skillshare classes and just improve your art and get some momentum going and have some positive experiences and then have pieces of art that you're proud of and that you think are good. And you have to get into the right mindset because when you follow a tutorial and it doesn't look exactly like the original then there's always a chance to beat yourself up and to be harsh on yourself but you have to be really proud of what you've created and how you improved and put your um, focus more on improving rather than being there already so if if I were to create a piece from a tutorial, for example, I wouldn't be here like, oh my gosh, it doesn't look as good as the original. I'd be like, hey, I've learned so much in this tutorial. Next time I could do this and that. And over time, if you improve your art skills and improve your mindset, these things will become a non-issue. I do lack confidence all the time in all areas of my life, but I just show up anyways because honestly that's the only way to do it and there are always gonna be people who are better than you, who are more confident than you and honestly I've seen full-time artists, especially here on YouTube, who aren't even that good at art, but they're so confident and they are fun. They have fun personalities. They're showing up and you love watching their videos because they're relatable. They don't have the perfect art pieces. So you think, hey, I could do that too. So you feel inspired. You feel entertained because those people are fun to watch. And so you really don't have to be perfect at this to be valid and to make money with it if you if that's what you plan on doing. So I really wanted to um, talk about this topic because I feel like it's a very relevant topic to artists. A lot of people ask me how to really get your mindset in order when it comes to your art and honestly it breaks my heart when I see artists who are so hard on themselves and when they say things like oh I love your art but mine is so terrible I don't know why are you saying that I mean it doesn't help you at all beating yourself up is not going to make you improve there are studies that show that criticism will not improve someone's skills at something because they will just be demotivated and won't want to show up anymore it's not fun to them anymore so sometimes you can give feedback to someone obviously but all all kinds of criticism and I'm really I'm gonna die on this hill I hate criticism I would not want to criticize someone because it always comes from negative energy and even if you're trying to be helpful criticism is not going to be helpful because all it does is discourage the person who you are criticizing it doesn't help at all so if someone has criticized you and you felt demotivated that's normal that's how our brain works so imagine what it does to yourself if you're criticizing yourself, if you're beating yourself up because most of the time we're much more harsh to ourselves versus other people. They're not that harsh to us than like we are. 
So imagine what it does that you're so harsh to yourself and you have this internal voice that tells you that you're not good enough, your art isn't good enough. And I'm not go I'm not saying that you can just completely shut up out that voice I'm just saying you don't have to believe everything your brain tells you I've been on this self-development journey for a few years now and I've honestly improved so much I had such a harsh inner critic that did not only criticize my art but just about anything that I did in my life and it's so much more quiet now because I didn't listen to it it told me that my videos aren't good enough and I uploaded them anyways it told me that I can't improve my videos and I did it anyways so I have a record of not listening to that voice and after a while it's like a little child if you ignore it for long enough it's going to become boring to annoy you so you just have to try to show up anyways even when you are scared and have self-doubt and after a while you will be able to show up much more confidently. So here you can see the piece coming together slowly. I was apparently on a call while creating this and I love that you can see me in the reflection of my phone. And I I did this piece in a moleskin watercolor sketchbook and I really like those sketchbooks but for sophisticated watercolor pieces, honestly, I recommend more better quality watercolor paper. So I've been loving the Hahnemühle watercolor expression paper and the Arches watercolor paper lately, just because I'm trying to get more onto a professional art skill. And a lot of you might already think that I, my art looks really professional, but I'm right now at a point where I want to improve even further. And I feel like I've been simplifying my pieces a little bit for my YouTube channel, for tutorials and uh, for those painting ideas videos that I do. And I would love to focus a little bit more on actually improving my art and actually doing what I want to do versus just thinking about what you would want to see. So there's always, it's always a balance between those two. Obviously you you always have to go back and forth a little bit between what you want to create and what people want to see. This is what it is like to be a YouTuber and I'm not complaining at all. I'm just trying to kind of find a little bit of a new path right now. So uh, it's actually really fun to look back at this footage that has been filmed I think half a year ago that... I, yeah, I think it was about half a year ago and I feel like I, if I were to do this piece right now, I'd probably do it a little bit differently, but I still really love this page and that sketchbook and I hope I can fill this sketchbook at one point because I have so many unfinished sketchbooks in case you haven't seen my unfinished sketchbooks tour video. So this is about this little piece. Is there anything else that I want to say about confidence? Uh, something that I also wanted to talk about is imposter syndrome because I think that's our new favorite fancy word for fear. I don't know if you've heard the term imposter syndrome, but it is a quite common term in the art community, especially if you're doing things like running a YouTube channel. It's something that you will come across you will feel it and at the end of the day it's just fear. I think imposter syndrome is just a very fancy euphemism for fear and it's like imposter syndrome is when you're doing something and you feel like a fraud, like an imposter at it because you feel like you're not good enough at it to be doing it, especially if you're for example doing art for money and you feel like your art isn't good enough for that and you're earning money with it and then the imposter syndrome kicks in and tells you that you're not good enough, that you shouldn't be doing it. There's so many things that it might be telling you and honestly I've had this feeling for 
every little thing that I did. I had it for filming my tutorials because who am I to show others how to paint something? I've had it for my Skillshare courses because who am I to earn money with this, with showing someone how to paint something? Who am I to do this? And then I had it with my coaching when I started it. Who am I to tell other people what to do with their business? Am I really qualified for this? And all those questions and they're normal and every single creative person out there has that probably most of them at least I don't think that I've met a creative person who's never had those fears and so if you're having imposter syndrome feel that you're not good enough essentially that's normal and you don't have to wait for this to go away. You don't have to wait to feel ready. And confidence is going to come from showing up anyways. So you are afraid, you have self-doubt and you do it anyways. You record the video, you finish the art piece, you upload it to Instagram, you create the Instagram reel and you publish it and you show it to all the people that you know. Even though you're scared, you're gonna do it anyway And that's what's going to create confidence because you're telling yourself, hey, I'm worth doing this, even though I'm scared, even though I've got my self-doubts, I'm still worth pursuing this, I can do this. And like I said earlier, it's like a little child that's throwing a tantrum and when you stop listening to it for a while, it's becoming more and more quiet. And you can talk to the child a little bit and try to soothe it. That's okay. You don't have to be harsh to it. Don't even be harsh to your inner critic because that doesn't work. You're just gonna beat yourself up for beating yourself up. So if self-doubt comes up and you're like, yeah, you're self-doubt, you are my self-doubt, you're not valid and I hate you and stop saying that, (laughs) whatever your version might be. If you beat yourself up for beating yourself up, that just creates more and more drama. So I I recommend if you have self-doubt just listen to it like you would to a little child that's upset and be like okay I hear you I see you that's okay we're not gonna do it your way though because at the end of the day that little child is sitting at the back seat and it can scream however much it wants and you're still driving the car. You don't have to listen to the child when it comes to the final destination. The child is not going to hold the steering wheel if you don't let it. And the best way to deal with it is to be kind to it, to listen to it, and to ignore it also a little bit. And just accept that it's there, it's there for the ride. Fear is always going to be a part of what you're going to do, no matter what you do, especially if you're doing something courageous. And the definition of courage is to feel the fear and show up anyways. So there's no courage without fear. And fear is always going to be part of life and art. And people always expect to feel good when creating art all the time. But that's just not how it works. It's like working out. It is hard to do. Even though it is fun, it's also hard to do. And sometimes you will feel your internal critic screaming at you the entire time that your piece doesn't look good enough. And who are you to call yourself an artist or a professional artist especially who are you to do this it's gonna scream all the time and that's okay you can still keep doing it you can still keep creating it and that's where your courage and your confidence is going to come from because at the end of the day you will learn that hey this is going to be there and I can still show up and do it anyways And if you're interested in a little bit more of all this mindset stuff, I have a course that's called How to Live a Creative Life and Let Nothing Stop You. That's perfect for you, especially if you're having a hard time to start creating, to be consistent with it, and you have a lot of excuses in your head why you can't create, whether it's a lack of time or a lack of supplies or a lack of ideas. I give you a prompt list 
in the course there's also a workbook so many things are in there and I thought that it would be relevant to mention it here because it talks a lot about the creative mindset and it's just at the end of the day it's okay to have fear and self-doubt nothing's wrong with you your brain is working it's just a matter of dealing with this the right way and still showing up so here's the finished piece i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope i could inspire you and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you next time goodbye